We're back. We're back. How was your Thanksgiving, fellas? Because was... we recorded that before Thanksgiving. Right. That is yeah. true, yeah. Uh, my Thanksgiving was good. Uh, spent it with family. Nice. Same. Saw a friend. Nice. It was a uh, good Thanksgiving. Good. A lot I'm thankful for this year. So. Same. Pleasant all around. Yeah. yeah. And also, I feel like I'm getting to the age where I'm not the kid at Thanksgiving anymore, Isn't you know? nice? You're like so an I adult can... now? Yeah. So I don't have that, like, nervous pressure to, like... Hug your uncle? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't really have much family in New York City, so... Me either. It's just, it's just kind of tight. Yeah. What about you? It was good? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was good. Can't complain, you know? Uh, a lot of lively discussion nothing crazy nothing crazy you know no 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 throwing no throwdowns no throwing no entrees food yeah no food <laughs> fights um but yeah i had i feel like i especially had a really nice time with like my younger cousins they're oh all, i love they're kids. all getting to an age where it's like i can kind of like Hi guys, cut you know like i don't have to be like hi you know like i don't have to put the kid voice you're anymore. getting so big right? yes, i mean no i mean it's it is surprising to me though like uh -huh. like i left for the summer and i came back and then all of a sudden i was like the way you play with them is different yeah i'm like you guys are so big now like now i'm now i'm the one be like can you stop growing up like can you can Let's you stop make, oh my God. every I time i see fun them. though like you can make jokes with them that you weren't able oh, to no. make oh no yeah totally like... but it's just it's it's scary to see someone else grow up yeah, yeah. i feel you know oh yeah it's, it's weird. It is. It's very weird. Your bones look different. <laughs> <laughs> when did you? When did you get so tall? Yeah. When did you grow up? If you get taller than me, we're gonna have an issue. We're gonna have an issue. Yeah, yeah, I get to. I get to see your cousins like once a year, and the last time I saw them, I was like, "You guys aren't in high school." No. No. I've there's no them, way. I've known them since. They're not in high school. Two of them are. Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. Who? Wait. Oh, girls. I guess the girls. Yeah. The girls. Ah! That's what I'm saying, yo. That's weird. Oh my Ugh, gosh, it's they, stressful. I, 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 I'm not gonna use names because we're on the podcast. Yeah. But the youngest is so much bigger. Yeah. Than he was before, uh -huh, and it's I bet. just like since Jeremy's no. graduation, it's so different. Also, it's kind of spooky. Uh, <laughs> it is very spooky. Um, I don't know if you intend to have your mask as an accessory for the whole podcast. I just wanted to check and make sure that you didn't accidentally yeah, see, do See, the mask chills around the neck, so it's like, oh, I took it off. You know? Yeah. I'll, I'll take it off. I'll take it off. I, did, no. I didn't want to get to the end of the podcast and have you be like, I was wearing my have mask I had my time? mask on the whole time? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I don't. It's an F1 mask. Nice to match the F1 hat. Race Baby. this weekend. Lewis! Because I already know, you know, Lewis... Won the Grand Prix this weekend, so congrats, Lewis. Haha. -ha. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Please don't let this fight me in the ass. <laughs> I'm betting on you, buddy. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm keeping Lewis in my thoughts and my prayers today. As we move into the Saudi Arabia race? Yes. Yes. Nice. Speaking of... Moving into... Thoughts and prayers. Wait, 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 Let's, wait. No, no, no. Hey, Let's everyone. Sorry. Welcome to the PatCast. Yeah, we were just talking. Oh, my God. Bit. I'm Jeremy oh. Suarez. I'm Jacob Wade. I'm Logan Riley Bruner. And um, before we before we get into our main one of our main yeah let's topics, do some housekeeping let's clean yeah, up yeah, yeah. House. let's do some housekeeping you you're right. we were really about to like dive I was really into about it. to dive into it I mean we I feel ready. like we're in the middle of the podcast already know, right? yeah <laughs> it's because we started with like a nice little cold open yeah. nice little I do like a nice conversational opening yeah, yeah me yeah. too it's nice housekeeping uh, housekeeping uh, this week tomorrow we are releasing an interview with new collective member Addie Jenkins uh, Addie we are so thankful to have them as a part of the collective they were a part of DNA where they mm. played Brian. Uh, uh, and they did a tremendous job. Um, we got to do an interview with them a few weeks back and get to know a little bit more about them. So we're very excited to be sharing that with you all. Yes, uh, other than that, podcasts still available on every podcast platform. You guys, you guys are really listening to us Thank around you. the world. Thank it's, you. it's really cool. Hi, everywhere that we saw on our analytics the other day as we were looking through it. It's really cool that so many people are getting to check us out. So uh, if you're supporting the podcast, we appreciate you no matter where you are. Other than that, there's not a lot new happening. We're moving into the winter. Things are getting cold. There's some prepping going on. I'm meeting with people to talk about projects and nice. all that secret stuff. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much all the housekeeping for this week. Cool. It's going to be a lot of prep, you know. Mm -hmm. It's in. It's it's important to prep. It is. It is. It know? is. Yeah. You know. We wanna. We wanna leave behind a legacy. Yes. I feel. I would like to leave. Of behind course. A legacy. I think legacies are important. Yeah. You know. 
Um, the winters and are the I already hibernate. see where you're going. And oh, Stephen Sondheim okay. surely left a legacy with us uh, this past week. Yep. He passed away into the next realm. Uh, he... I mean, legend. You know? Legend. That's someone I grew up learning about in school. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and inspired me. Um, in fact, the first musical I... Like, the first, like, not, like child musical you know that i saw that made me fall in love with musical theater was west side story yeah the and first why... non-kid musical that i was in was assassins wow wow that's oh my a bold God. first non-kid musical yeah. to be in. yeah it was the first time i was like not doing children's theater first time in profession in a professional space was assassins yeah. but wow. that's that's you know that's just one example of his range yeah. you know from romeo and juliet to i mean I'm, I'm 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 Happy is the wrong word, but I'm happy that he got to live to see Tick, Tick, Boom, and the kind of and the new West Side Story, also. and the new West Side Story, the 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 cultural impact that he left on us, the yeah. artists that he affected. All I've heard from people this week is just these stories about how he'd like stumble into these like off, off, off Broadway houses or like these random rehearsal rooms and just be with artists. That's great. Like the whole story of Tick, Tick, Boom is all about how he inspired Jonathan Larson to continue writing. There's an entire yeah. song in that show that's dedicated to Sunday in the Park with George. So he really leaves behind an incredible legacy of just amazing work and incredible art. Yeah. And, uh, I hope to get to do some of it someday. Me too. Professionally. I think... I've, I've done it, like, in school, and I've done it, like, mm -hmm. as a kid, yeah. being in the ensemble, but, like, yeah. Assassins is a dream, Sweeney Todd is a dream. Yeah. I think that West Side Story is my favorite Sondheim... Uh, show? Show. Yeah. yeah. He only did lyrics, but, like, still, like... Mm -hmm. He also contributed to Melody, I'm, no, sure. I'm sure. he did. He also just, like left such a print on new york yeah mm -hmm. um there got, are a lot yeah. of artists who are artists because of him yeah he used to go he used to be the panelist at those nights that were like we're aspiring musical theater writers will you come listen to our new that's pieces so, and give us yeah. notes yeah. that's that's how jonathan larson met him that's amazing was that one of those nights that's amazing it's um, incredible let's, i want to go around and just say maybe top three musicals by sondheim yeah um, for you i'll start yeah uh assassins is at the top okay i think it's especially now especially now yeah. in the tiktok generation sure <laughs> it is it has a lot to say mm -hmm. sondheim before the reality tv generation yeah. predicted everybody's got the right to be famous mm -hmm. everyone has the right to be happy and it's mm -hmm. it's scary a little bit how accurate he was uh, in his prediction of the future. Um, Sweeney is number two. Okay. And then I think it's a tie between Into the Woods and Sunday in the Park with George. Nice. Because I think Into the Woods is fabulous. Uh, I think the actual stage version is so clever and does some really interesting things at the end of the first act, moving into the second, mm -hmm. uh, which I won't spoil because if you've seen the movie, you have not seen Into the Woods. <laughs> you've seen a really good movie. I love the Into the Woods movie, but it, it cuts out so much of the stuff that's in the book uh, of the musical. Um, and Sunday in the Park with George is Sunday in the Park with George. I feel like I can't leave it off a list when talking about Sondheim because it's just iconic. Um, Jake Gyllenhaal did a version of it a couple years ago on Broadway, and it was yeah so good. Mm. Um, I've only listened to it, and I like chills wow. when I hear it. Um, yeah, he leaves behind a legacy. Yeah. So those are my those are Tuesday. my four. Four. Yeah. You? Yeah. Uh, well, in no particular order, I'll say uh, West Side Story, uh, Sweeney Todd, and Company. Nice. Uh, I only recently discovered Company, and I just got so hooked on it you have yeah and like to be able to get like so hooked and attached to something that you know came out of forever ago before i was even 1970 conceived mm -hmm. you know um it's just really cool and yeah. uh company even though i'm still in my early 20s company still has a lot to relate to i feel like it's only gonna get more prominent can't wait to see the it more we live yeah yeah i i really want to see it on that way as well Katrina Lank playing the lead. I'm yeah. so yeah. excited. 
Yep. And Sweeney Todd just because it's it's haunting and, oh my and God, beautiful yeah. and romantic and scary and disturbing oh and God. so poetic. Yeah. And like the movie version just kind of lives forever. Yeah. yeah, totally. For me, West Side Story's at the top. I love a New York I love story. I get it. I mean, I mean, come on, come on. snap, 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 it's passe, just, snap, come it's on, just <laughs> so iconic. Yeah. Um, second has to be Sweeney Todd. Just, I mean, the musical themes throughout that show are so brilliant, yeah. and the way that he twists them and slows them down in some places and speeds them, like it's just a masterpiece. It's almost like a. I was gonna say it's almost like an opera. That's what I thought you were gonna say. Yeah, um, and I'd agree with you. It's honestly. got that sense. There's not a lot of just dialogue. Yeah, not many scenes. Just mm-hmm. kind of. And songs, the scenes the normally have a up. musical thing happening totally. during them. Totally. There's like one moment that's dead silent, and I remember it because I was like, "There's nothing. On. I have to just sit with this right now." And last has to be Into the Woods. I've. It's also iconic. I've seen so many productions of it. Right. Each character has an iconic song, and... Oh, there's so many roles. Yeah, there's so much comedy, there's... there's. It's a great ensemble piece. There's uh, Every character gets a moment to really shine, and yeah. I, I always love it, so... It's just this conversation is reminding me that like two of my initial like book songs, like the songs that I had in my... Like rap, your audition songs. My audition songs yeah. were There Are Giants in the Sky. Yeah. And uh, nothing's gonna harm you. Boom! Oh, those are so good for you. Thank you. Yeah, I do. Um, <laughs> I do. Something's coming in Maria. Honestly, same. Yeah, maybe somewhere in there as well. Okay. But like most of my. I've like, heard you sing Maria. A yeah, lot. most of my go-to book songs are West Side Story. Yeah, and Tom Nine, It's just so. he's so good. Yeah. Yeah. And if I and if you know if I go out on another uh, on another audition, then I would probably put Being Alive in there as well. Boom! Oh my God! He, God. Someone to hold you too close. I don't want to get copyright strided. <laughs> copyright strike strided. Whatever. S- stricken. <laughs> stricken. Yes. I do not wish to be stricken with copyrights. May he rest in peace. May yeah. he rest in peace. Legend. And, and may his work continue to inspire generations upon generations of of actors, performers. Cheers. To the big theater in the sky. Yeah. Oh. So sweet. Billy Shakes is no longer the big dog in the yard. Right, huh? I know that reference. <laughs> Do you? Nope. <laughs> William Shakespeare. Oh, there Billy. We go. There Billy. we go. Yeah, okay, all right. There cool, we go. cool, cool. All right. Um, Moving to something slightly less uh, upsetting. Um, slightly. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Honestly, okay. It's this not that bad. Year, way less it's upset. not that bad. This, this year of way Grammy nominations <laughs> is probably the least offensive in a while. Fair. Okay. Yeah. I'd say. We're not saying do better Grammys this week. I don't think... Not really. So, not really. No. Now, 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 when the winners are decided... That might be different. We'll see what happens. The nominations story. are fairly good. Okay, let's let's go through just our our favorite... Sets. We're not going to go through all the categories. Not no. all of them. I mean, no. we don't have the time. There's so many categories. And, I mean, I, I don't want to talk too much on, you know... I don't want to say who's going to win in the country category when I don't listen to any of those. No. How about people. this? Let's go through the categories... And then let's take turns saying, for that category, our prediction of what we think is going to win. And who we think should win. And who we think should win. Got it. Like who we want. All right. So let's start with the big one. Record of the year. Now, remember, okay, because we, I feel like we, we go through we this, this every, every year. year. And I yeah. just want to clarify it to the audience. Uh, record of the year goes to the artist and to the producers, recording engineers, and or mixers and mastering engineers. So it's like the Everyone team. who worked on the song. Everyone. Like, we're the looking... The song as a whole. The song as a whole. The record. We have I Still Have Faith in You by ABBA. Freedom by John Batiste. I Get a Kick Out of You, Tony Bennett and Lady Gaga. Peaches, Justin Bieber featuring Daniel Caesar and Giveon. Right on Time, Brandy Carlisle. Yep. Kiss Me More, Doja Cat featuring SZA. Happier Than Ever, Billie Eilish. Wow, there's so many. Montero, Call Me By Your Name, okay. Lil Nas X. Driver's License, Olivia Rodrigo. And Leave the Door Open by Silk Sonic, a.k.a. Bruno Mars and Anderson Pock. What a wow. list. What a list. It's yeah, all right. And let's, I can't... Let's just... I, there's, not, there's not one, like, right off the bat that I say... That I think 
deserves it more than like anyone else. It's it's a tough list. Okay, so I I it's difficult to say who I think should win. Who I think will win is Driver's License by Olivia Rodrigo. I agree. I think that's taking home record of the year. It was iconic. It was everywhere. Thanks, TikTok. SNL skits. It was yeah. every, like, everyone wanted a piece of driver's license. So yeah. I think that's taken record of the year. For me, I'm, I'm flipping between Montero, leave the door open, <sighs> happier than ever, kiss me more, wow. maybe throw freedom in there. Like, All right, you like a lot of music. I do. I, I mean, I didn't listen to I Still Have Faith in You. I didn't listen yeah, to didn't a listen. lot of these. I think I Get a Kick Out of You will probably take something like Song of the Year. Um, I think so they'll I definitely... I, think, I don't know. I think that I Tony think give, and Gaga album Tony. will win in the in category. category. Yeah, yeah. I think they give Tony something. Yeah. Yes, it's but I don't think album. song or record. Or record, no. It's not going to be on any of the big three. Okay. And if it does, wow. Wow, indeed. <laughs> My gosh. Jacob, predictions? Oh, you're, record... you're skipping you? Oh, oh! I mean, I said I agree oh, you... with Logan. Okay, driver's okay. license. Okay, yeah. Fine, Who do yeah, I no. want to win? Yeah. Uh, it's probably between Silk Sonic, Leave the Door Open, and Kiss Me More. Um, I don't really care that much for Happier Than Ever, to be honest. Right, okay. Both, okay. Yeah, both as an album and as a song. It was good, but there are some other people I want to see get awards. That's fair. Yeah. Jacob? Well, I'm not going to argue against driver's license because, come on, I mean, I, but I, the thing about driver's license is that I, for me, it's more song of the year than record of the year. Right. If we're talking oh, about production here, because it goes to the whole team, not just the artist and the song, right? right. It's, this one's yeah. about production, really. I described the category and I still didn't look at it through that lens. Right? Exactly. So looking at it through that lens... Montero has some really Amazing impressive production. production. But would I give it record of the year or album of the year? Well, they're well asked, this is this the is song. This is just a song. This is the song right now. No, I know. Do I give... Well, we're not... We're, we're not there yet. You're not there yet. I, as If I'm debating what the Grammys are doing, I think that's what they do a lot of the times. It's like, are we going to give them this award for this oh, thing? Oh, or this, yeah. Or we're can't, this we can't. Right, right, we don't want to give them both. Well, because then people get sour that sweep? someone sweeped. Yeah, yeah are we yeah. going to let them sweep or are we going to give it, them right. this? I know. I I think Montero could take record of the year. Okay. Although, Industry Baby's discussion. not there. Anyway. It's going to be a long discussion, guys. Yeah. Okay. Um, but who I want is also, yeah, I think Lil Nas X. Lil Nas X? Yeah. Okay. I want Lil Nas X to win something major. Cause I think Maybe, like, Album of the Year. Let's, whose let's talk about nominees it. are We Are by John Batiste, Love for Sale, Tony Bennett and Lady Gaga, cool. Justice, Triple Chucks Deluxe by Justin Bieber. I mean, come on. Planet Her Deluxe by Doja Cat. I love that album. Happier Than Ever, Billie Eilish. Good. Back of My Mind by Her, Montero by Lil Nas X, Sour by Olivia Rodrigo, Oof. Evermore by Taylor Swift. It's so tough. And Donda by Kanye West. It's so tough. Okay. I think this category is tougher than record. Yeah. I think Sour's an amazing album. I didn't listen to it. But I think there are a couple of iconic tracks and then a lot of good tracks. So I think that moves it more into it's going to be record or song. I think more likely song of the year. Yes. I think song of the year. So we're not giving her album of the year because she's taking song of the year. That's in my head. Record. That's where I'm going. Record. We just talked about record. I know. I'm oh, saying he's later. Saying song. Oh, okay, okay, we're gonna yeah, give yeah, her song yeah, of the yeah, year yeah, yeah. in my head. Right. So not record. Okay. I liked Donda a lot. It was pretty solid, other but than the problematic features. That's yeah. That's where my problem comes yeah. into play. Is that there are multiple problematic features on the album. You don't want to give them. <laughs> Grammys. Yeah, because yeah, look at all the freaking people listed. There's in this so thing. many Holy people crap. on all the All those album. people are going to get a Grammy. I mean, including the problematic dope. ones. That's dope. It is dope. I think Evermore is going to get a lot of love. I don't know if it's going to get I forgot that album Evermore came out because Red has been like in. Re released. Yeah. And yeah. Um, for me, my pick who I want it to go to okay. is Montero. 
I think Montero was my album of the year. I have continued to listen to it. Okay. It's amazing. All right. Yeah, Great. that's fine. Who I think it's going to go to yeah. is either Planet Her yeah. or Evermore. I agree with you. Sorry to cut in, cut in line, but I think that Doja Cat's going to take album of the year because... Honestly, a lot, it, of hits. It, it, a lot of hits. A lot of hits. And Doja is going up. Uh, mm-hmm. um, yeah, you're right. I, I think Doja Cat's going to take this album of the year. Um, who I want to win, Donda. I want Donda to win because it was my favorite of all of them. Sorry, Justin. <laughs> um, I also really like Donda. Uh, very outspoken about that. Get it. Um, it's a great album. It's a great album. But I think... Who I want to win and who I predict will win mm-hmm. are the same album. You think Donda's going to take And it? I think it's going to wow. be Montero. Oh. Okay. I you do. think Montero's going to take it? Yeah. And you want Montero to take it? Wow. Both. Okay. Both. All right. I want Montero to get the award. I don't, I don't I... know about that, but okay. We'll see. Hey. All right. Next up. Song of the Year. Love now, it. this is for the songwriting. It's yeah, I've lyrical. Already, I've, lyrical. Already, I've already said who I think. Think the lyrics. It's going to win. Uh, Bad Habits by Ed Sheeran A Beautiful Noise by Alicia Keys and Brandi Carlile Driver's License, Olivia Rodrigo Fight For You, Her Happier Than Ever, Billie Eilish Kiss Me More, Doja Cat featuring SZA Leave the Door Open, Silk Sonic Montero, Call Me By Your Name, Lil Nas X Peaches, Justin Bieber featuring Daniel Caesar and Kivion And Right On Time by Brandi Carlile I don't know who Brandi Carlile is Look her up She's really good okay, Yeah, I will Who I want to win and who I think it should win and who will win are the same okay i think driver's license deserves song of the year okay yeah i I think i agree heart she it's an amazing it's an incredibly well-written song good for you olivia yeah Uh good for you you look happy and healthy yeah Uh uh i too uh think the driver's license should get it i would really like to see Silk Sonic win something this year just because well we'll get to them we'll get to them I know I know I know but they're they're there and if I'm looking at lyrics then I also really like the leave the door open lyrics okay but Olivia is the singer songwriter anyway yeah I think driver's license yeah yeah. all right let's move on all right next best new artist this is always a weird one because they consider best new artist as first time Grammy nomination and not like wow you just new artist you just started making music this year so there's gonna be some people that have been making music for like four years and there's gonna be some people who just started making music this year yeah we have Aruj Aftab Jimmy Allen Baby Keem Phineas Glass Animals Japanese Breakfast The Kid Leroy Arlo Parks Olivia Rodrigo and Saweetie. Good for Saweetie. Yeah. Good for Saweetie. I'm going to say Olivia Rodrigo for Yeah. For this one, I think that's my prediction. Who, yeah. who I, I agree. Would, if I'm giving Olivia Rodrigo song of the year, if I'm the Grammys and I've granted I her also want to give it to her though. I I would like her it's who I think is going to get it is Olivia Rodrigo. Yeah. Who I want to get it is Olivia Rodrigo. Or Baby Keem. I really want to see Baby Keem get this. But I know it's not going to happen. It's not going to go to Baby Keem. It's not going to go to Baby Keem. Yes. So if it goes to Olivia Rodrigo, fine. But if it goes to Baby Keem, even I think Olivia deserves it. I mean, she's She's... been carrying the United States of America on her back. (laughs) Okay. Since Driver's License came out, teens everywhere have been, you said forever and I drive Corvette down my street. Oh, TikTok. Bitch. All right, moving on. Into the pop category. Yeah. Yep. Best pop solo performance for recordings. Vocals. vocals. This is just for vocals. Mm-hmm. Anyone. Or, or instrumental. Or instrumental pop recordings. Yes. Um, anyone. Justin Bieber. Right on time. Brandi Carlile. Happier than ever. Billie Eilish. Positions. Ariana Grande. Driver's License. Olivia Rodrigo. I don't want to say everything's going to go to... I, I don't. Think... I don't. I think if they give it song of the year, they're going to give Positions uh, pop song of the year. Yeah. Okay. I because I it. think Positions is more of a pop solo performance than, than Olivia. Good. Than I agree. Sizes. Good. I agree. I th- <laughs> I predict that they'll give it to Positions. I want them to give it to Justin Bieber. This, because which one is anyone? If it's not you, it's oh. not anyone. Yeah. I've got to tell you. Okay. Gotta, no. Looking back on yeah, the give, give it to Positions. Video. It's a good song. 
give it to position. I I think positions is gonna take it. Right. But I want anyone to take it because he gives his all in that pop performance. It's a valid. It's a valid argument. Argument for it. Best pop duo. Sorry. (laughs) Ariana Grande makes it look effortless. Yes. Right. Yes. Not to say that she's not giving a better everything. Like Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Just wanted to make that point. But Justin is like giving it, He's and Ariana is just like, and it it like it it's feels another day for emotional. Her. Yeah, it's just like, ah! yeah. yeah. Switching the positions for you, like <laughs> we can't get on a tangent. Best pop duo group performance. I get a kick out of you, Tony Bennett and Lady Gaga. Okay. Lonely, Justin Bieber and Benny Blanco. Okay. Butter, BTS, Higher Power, Coldplay, Kiss Me More, Doja Cat featuring SZA. Oh. I. Ooh! Did okay. You start. I. Would like, I think Kiss Me More might get it. I think Kiss I think Me, Kiss me More I is going to get it. So that Kiss Me More, and take I it. want either Kiss Me More or Tony Bennett and Lady Gaga to get it. I think Butter might. Get I think it. Butter might. I think I think I want BTS to take something. To get home. a Grammy, and if they're going to be nominated for group performance, then yeah, that's them. Give them. Yeah. Get, they. I think they might give it till I get a kick out of you. Um, so that Tony will so take that something Tony home. Can get his Grammy. I think he already has a few. I yeah. think he already a has lot. a few. They're but... definitely <laughs> going to win Best Traditional Pop Vocal Album, which we won't yeah, talk about. Yeah, yeah. They're definitely, I think... Love for Sale is totally taking up. that. Yeah. Okay. Give it a Kiss Me More. That's what I say. Okay. Yeah, give it to Kiss Me More. Yeah. Okay, Best Pop Vocal Album. Album. Justice. The whole, the whole thing, all the songs. Justice, Triple Trucks Deluxe. Justin, by Justin Bieber. Yeah. Planet Her Deluxe. Doja Cat. Happier Than Ever, Billie Eilish. Positions, Ariana Grande. Sour, Olivia Rodrigo. <sighs> Best. Okay. Best look at, look at the category. Vocal. Best pop vocal album. I haven't listened to Sour. How pop is it? It's, I think it's... It's a I, lot of ballads. It's yeah, a lot I would of ballads. categorize it as more singer-songwriter right. than pop. Okay. I'm taking Olivia Rodrigo Sour off the list. Off Me this too. one. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's gonna go to Planet Her. Yes. I would like to see it go to Planet Her. I think, or Ariana I think, Grande. I think if Planet Her I did wins, like Positions a lot. If Planet Her wins here, it's not getting Album of the Year. Probably. But if Planet Her doesn't win here, it is. Okay. That's my prediction. If they give Ariana Grande this one, they're giving Doja Cat. Ariana Grok. Ariana Gr- Have you seen that video of Larry <laughs> David messing up her name no, on SNL? No, I haven't. Oh, gosh. He goes, Ariana Grok. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ariana Gr- <laughs> Okay, moving on to... Wait, hold on, hold oh, on. Oh. What, what are you looking up? I'm looking up the Triple Trucks Deluxe set list like the the track list the track because list. what do you need to know peaches anyone lonely and red eye <laughs> red eye's not on the triple talks it isn't no no it's not well that's some it's bullshit. on the complete um and that's why justice not gonna i will it. say they didn't nominate the complete <laughs> justice has a lot of hits and i want it to win okay Sorry. You are our resident Justin Bieber fan. You are our yeah, resident But I Justin think Bieber. that Doja deserves it. I would love to see Doja take a couple awards this yeah. year. Yeah, oh yeah. Best That's R&B be. performance. I'm just going to go through this this one real quick. Cool. Uh, Lost You by Snow Allegra. Peaches, Justin Bieber featuring Daniel Caesar and Giveon. Damage by Her. Leave the Door Open, Silk Sonic. And Pick Up Your Feelings by Jasmine Sullivan. I want to see it go to Silk Sonic, yep. and I don't really understand why Peaches is here. Yeah, oh. I don't feel like I feel like Peaches is a little more pop. It's than, pop. I get my peaches down in Georgia, and then yeah. either pop or a melodic rap song because that's now a category. Melodic rap. Yeah. yeah, melodic rap. Okay, sure. No, but I find it weird that Peaches is here. It's the only reason I put this category in here because I just wanted to, I wanted to say, say that. that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, leave the door open. Leave the door open. This might okay. help. I haven't listened to the other ones. No. So yeah, I can't I say can't I have say. either. Sorry, guys. But good for her. You are very consistent with getting Grammy Yeah, I need to listen to Her's album because yeah. it's just getting yeah. all the nominations and I haven't listened to it yet. Right. Um, best R&B song. Best R&B song. Damage by Her. Good Days by SZA. Heartbreak Anniversary Ooh. by Giveon. See, that's an R&B song. Leave the Door Open, Silk Sonic, and Pick Up Your Feelings by Jasmine Sullivan. 
Okay, what's the difference between best R&B song and best uh, R&B performance? Vocals versus songwriting. Okay. So Good this days. Is, this is vocals. This is songwriting. This, this is songwriting. Best R&B, best whatever, song, song is songwriting. Song best blank performance, performance, vocals. Got it. Okay. Good days. I want to win. Best R&B song? I feel like I haven't listened to enough of them. To yeah, I mean, Leave the Door Open is so iconic that I think... Mm -hmm. But would I give it songwriting? I want Good Days to win. I get it. I want to see Silk Sonic or Giveon win. We should... Every single thing that we're like... I haven't heard that one yet. Like we should check them out. In the, yeah. in the post podcast hangout we should just like play all of them yeah we should it's a it lot out. of music but yeah yeah rap performances next. all right moving on to the rap category best rap performance family ties baby king featuring kendrick lamar up cardi b my life j cole featuring 21 savage and moray way too sexy drake featuring future and young thug thought s thought shit uh by megan the stallion uh i mean i'm very biased in this category i Firmly believe Family Ties is the best rap. I think it should win. Performance. Performance. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the performance just me up. I agree. No, I, I'm no. standing. I'm standing firm. I think Family Ties is honestly one of the best rap songs of the year. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Um, and so I want to see it win. Uh, I think it's either gonna go to Family Ties or Cardi B. I for think, performance. I think for performance it'll go to Megan or Cardi B. Wow. Okay. Cool. I would love to Fuck see em. Family Ties mm -hmm. win. Yeah. But I think I think thought she was everywhere, and yeah, in amazing. terms of a so performance, up. like in terms yeah. of full song, everything like that, that was an Hands iconic song. Hands on my knees, song. shaking ass like I'm a I'm thought a, shit. I'm a thought shit. Yeah. It was TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. The Grammys this year are just like riddled with TikTok. Best melodic rap performance: Pride is the Devil, J okay. Cole featuring Lil Baby. Yeah. Need to know, Doja Cat. Industry Baby, okay. Lil Nas X featuring Jack Harlow. There it is. Okay. What's your name? Title the Creator featuring Young Boy NBA and Ty Dolla Sign, and Hurricane Kanye West featuring The Weeknd and Lil Baby. This is a hard one. It's a hard one. Melodic performance. Who would I like to win? What's your name? Okay. I, I loved it. Okay. Who do I think's gonna win? Need to know. <gasps> or Industry Baby. I agree with who do you think is gonna win? I do agree. I think Industry I Baby's think, gonna win. And I think that's who I want to win as well. Okay. What? Oh, but either of them? Industry Baby or Need to Know. Yeah. I think I think just in terms of, like, the category, like, when I think melodic rap performance, combining R&B with rap, What's Your Name is what, like, comes to my head more than I think Industry Baby or Need to Know. But I think Industry Baby and Need to Know are both yeah. incredible songs and are probably gonna take it. And Hurricane is a beautiful song, but I think... The weekend is really the only melodic part of that song. Fair. You know? Yeah. Because Lil Baby's not. I was just thinking that Industry rapping. Baby is kind of like a pop rap song. Yeah. Ver not really R and B, B rap. Yeah. But yeah. But this is an R and B rap. But well, it says we're it's gonna need another both category. Both elements oh. of R and B and oh, rap. Okay. 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 Yeah, yeah, we're gonna need another category for pop rap. I mean, how many different categories are we gonna have? Sub genres right. are there gonna be? No. All right, best rap song. Did I put the Songwriters Award? Yeah, Songwriters Award. Bad Salts, DMX featuring Jay-Z and Nas. Best Friend. That's my best friend. Mm. Beep, beep. Is that my Bessie and a Tessie? Saweetie Come featuring on. Doja Cat. Yeah. Family Ties. Woo! Baby Keem featuring Kendrick Lamar. Amazing, brother. Jail. Kanye West featuring Jay-Z. My Just Life featuring uh, J. Cole featuring 21 Savage and Moray. I find it kind of weird that Jail is the one nominated for Best Off, song. off Thunder, right? Yeah. yeah. I think that's really weird. In terms because of people love a Kanye and Jay-Z collab. collab. And but also that, just in terms iconic. of songwriting, it's it's a really well-written song. Yeah. <sighs> They're better written songs on Donald. Are... I'm sorry. Yeah. I like it a lot. Okay. I think Jail's one of my faves. Hova and Jesus, like Moses and Jesus, you're not in control of my thesis. You already know what I think of big pieces. Like, uh, come on. Like, like come on. <laughs> but, like, I am the Omega... PG like really getting a say. Don't you address me in lessons with four letters? Yeah. Amazing brother. Give it. Give it a family ties. Yeah. I want family ties. I, I I think family ties. I really love best friend. Me too. But family ties is I, just great. Yeah, I'm predicting family ties, and I want best friend. Yeah. Kind of secretly. <laughs> secretly. Not so uh, secretly. Best rap album. The off season by J Cole. Certified lover boy. Drake. King's Disease Two. 
My Nas. Call Me If You Get Lost, Tyler the Creator, Donda, Kanye West. I never thought I'd say this. I want Kanye to win the Grammy. Yeah. I didn't think I'd ever say well, that. come on, Logan. I'm normally not a Kanye fan, but Donda was, Donda was really good. great. Was really I, good. okay, okay. I really like Donda. Don't you say it. I really like Donda. Don't you, Don't you say fucking I'm not say gonna, it. I'm not, I'm not gonna say it. In okay. fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something to support what you're thinking. Okay. okay in a second. Okay. But let me get through this first. Okay. I love Donda. I think Tyler, the creator, surprised and blew us all away yeah. with this Call me if you get lost. album. Well, I Igor don't... Igor was... Igor. Igor was real good. Yes, but I I think this was a very unexpected direction for Tyler to go after Igor. True. And I think that it paid off really well. Every song is hot. So you want to... You I want to see... Call me if you get lost. Okay. Win, okay. and I don't want to see Drake win anything this year. Me either. I uh, like. I like way too sexy as a joke, <laughs> right? It's like sometimes you like a song ironically to the point where it becomes unironic. Moo by I'm, Doja Cat. Sure. Um, I'm like I like way too sexy ironically. I'm not not unironically just yet. If I if, if it's on my Apple Music replay, it's because um it's just in my head. But I don't think it's Grammy worthy of anything. All right. What's next? Um, best compilation soundtrack for visual <laughs> media. You guys set me up and I struck out. <laughs> it was like, it was like, sir. <gasps> yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Best compilation soundtrack. We have Cruella, Dear Evan Hansen, In the Heights, One Night in Miami, and Respect. There's two more. And Schmigadoon episode one. And don't forget. <laughs> the United States versus Billie Holiday. Best Compilation soundtrack for a visual media. I think in the heights. I agree. Gotta admit, I've seen none of these. Why did I put this I have category? Seen none of I've these seen either. Cruella, but I don't think that's gonna win. That's yeah. There we go. Next, I think it. it <laughs> I think it should be in the heights. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or one night in Miami. Give Leslie, yeah, give Leslie, Leslie another Grammy. He probably deserves it anyway. Yeah. Okay. Best score soundtrack for visual media. We have Bridgerton by Chris Bowers. Dune, Hans Zimmer. I mean. The Mandalorian Season 2, Volume 2, Chapters 13 to 16. Ludwig Goransson. The Queen's Gambit, Carlos Rafael Rivera. And Soul, John Batiste, Trent Reznor, and Atticus Ross. That's hard. This is very hard. That's hard. Well, I'm <laughs> super biased. Your, your guy 10, it's not in... Uh... That was last year. Oh, that was last year. Yeah. 2020. This is the 2021 Grammys. All of this came out in 2021? Man, why isn't my guy John Mayer nominated for Sob Rock? We we skipped the rock category. No, but I don't think he is. Oof. Well, I'm biased and I want to see it go to Dune. Uh, He's not nominated at all. He's not nominated. John Mayer's not on here. Damn it. That makes me sad. I wanted, some, I wanted Sob Rock to win <laughs> something. Something. Come on. Rock? Fuck. Um, okay. I th- predict that Dune will win, but I want Mandalorian. I think Dune or Soul will win. I'm going to say that Soul good. has a shot. Soul um, is pretty good. Mandalorian and Queen's Gambit, I think, both have really amazing music, so it's really hard for me to pick in this category. I think everyone... I think there there is not a single nominee in this category that if they got it, I'd be like, What?! It's just going to be like, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Best song we're in for visual media. Oh, boy. Agatha All Along from WandaVision Episode 7. All Eyes on Me from Inside, Bo Burnham. All I Know So Far from Pink, All I Know So Far. Fight For You from Judas and the Black Messiah by Ooh. Her. Here I Am Singing My Way Home from Respect by Jennifer Hudson. And Speak Now from One Night in Miami by Leslie Odom Jr. Give it to All Eyes on Me, Bo Burnham. I'm upset that he didn't get nominated for Best Comedy Album. I think the reason that they supplied was kind of bullshit. What'd they say? Uh, I didn't see. It wasn't funny. No, no. <laughs> what? The majority of it wasn't comedy. Shut That's the fuck it. up! Yeah. Um, oh my god. I wanna... Okay. I think Bo Burnham might get it. Thank you. He I should. want Agatha all along to win. I I have to agree <laughs> with you. Because uh, because 
cultural moment. I think there are better songs on Inside Agreed. than All Eyes on Me. Yes. Holy I agree. think I yes. think that funny feeling, I would have given it to that. I think Turning 30, I think Shit, I th- like so many of those songs I think are better White than White Woman Instagram. White Woman Instagram. Like All Eyes on Me is yeah, White good. Woman Instagram. But I don't think it's as strong as and I think Agatha All Along Problematic. was a cultural <laughs> moment sure but we're not here to judge moments we're talking about music here like it's but is is best song written for visual media about the actual song the songwriters or how award. it fits in it's a songwriters award yeah. or a song melody and lyrics written specifically for a motion picture television video game or other visual media so it's best it's most well written song than i think Eyes on me. Come on. Fight for you. Okay. Yeah, it was really good. Okay. All right. And fi- the final category we're going to go over go through, yeah. is... I have it listed on the list, but I want to find it on the website. Uh, scroll, scroll, scroll. Best music video. And then there's one more after best music video that I want to go through. Okay. Shot in the Dark by ACDC. Freedom, John Batiste, I Get a Kick Out of You, Tony Bennett and Lady Gaga, Peaches, Justin Bieber featuring Daniel Caesar and Giveon, Happier Than Ever, Billy Eilish, Montero, Call Me By Your Name by Lil Nas X, and Good For You by Olivia Rodrigo. Montero. 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 Great. It was a great music video. Yeah. Final category. Uh, best music film. Inside by Bo Burnham. Woo! David Byrne's American Utopia by David oh. Byrne. Happier Than Ever, A Love Letter to Los Angeles by Billy Eilish. Music, Money, Madness, Jimi Hendrix and Maui. Jimi Hendrix, Summer of Soul, various artists. Uh, I, I think this one's say. really tough. Yeah, well, um, I, I would inside. love Inside to take it. I think Inside should take it, but yes. I just have to shout out Summer of Soul, Happier Than... Like, all of these are incredible films. Um, and I think to have a, like, music film... Ca- like, Inside is nowhere the same as Summer of Soul. Summer of Soul's a documentary about a concert where you see concert footage... And inside this is a depression musical. Comedy. <laughs> it's a musical. Like you could put a yeah. few different labels on it. I don't. Uh, Amer- David Burns' American Utopia was a like musical. stage show. That was a musical. Yeah, but it was also a stage show. It's a recording of a stage show. So that's like putting didn't Hamilton in here. Well, yeah. didn't they? They did that last year. Yeah, yeah, and they won it, didn't they? I think so. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's how I feel. Inside, love Bo Burnham. Um. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, yeah, that's uh, all our categories. The Grammys will go down at the end of January, and we'll be back with that podcast to let you know our thoughts on the winners and the losers. Yeah, hopefully we won't be going, come on, Grammys. Hopefully we'll be like, the Grammys did great this year. Fingers crossed. We'll have to wait and see, but uh, while we're looking forward for the Grammys, here are some movies that you can expect to come out this week. Oh, thank you, Jeremy. What a throw. Uh, all right, we've got some great stuff coming out this week. Um, some stuff that I'm actually really excited about. We're getting into Oscar season. So uh, I'm going to start with the movies that were already released that are getting sent to VOD, to Netflix, to Hulu, and then we're going to move on from there. First up, we have The Scrapper, which features two actors that I personally love, Ava Paloma, who I worked with back when I was at AGR, and Miles Plohesse, who we all know from Jacob and Jeremy's time on Fire Island. It's an action movie about human trafficking, looks like Indian mob almost. Uh, it's coming to VOD today, so check that one out. Uh, Miles, we hope you're killing it on your new movie, Out, out West. Um... Next up, we have Encounter, which we talked on last week's minicast. It arrives on Amazon Prime on Friday. And The Unforgivable from Patcast 42 and Back to the Outback, which we talked about last week, are both coming to Netflix on Friday as well. So check those out on your uh, virtual platforms in terms of things that you can see in theaters. Okay, so while most movies release on Friday, uh, this first documentary releases a day early right here in NY. So Late So Soon is the story of Jackie and Don Selden, two Chicago artists who have built a life as a couple for the last 50 years and are now dealing with the deterioration of both their homes and their bodies. Directed by Daniel Hymanson, this emotional documentary looks like a brutally honest truth into the fears that we all have about losing control over ourselves and our lives. It did look really interesting. Yeah, it looks really cool. I'm super excited. Um, It's always interesting to see relationships that have lasted that long and just how Mm -hmm. they've continued to make things happen. Yeah. 
Shifting to narrative releases this week. Starting off, we have one I'm really thrilled about. Uh, it didn't get much press until fairly recently, but National Champions, directed by Rick Roman Waugh and written by Adam Mervis. This film focuses in on the ongoing battle that the NAA, uh, NCAA has had with its collegiate athletes over the use of their likeness in TV broadcasts and gaming. Mm -hmm. There was a huge controversy about it in the news because the NCAA is a multi-billion dollar company. They're using their players and their players aren't getting paid. Um, taking place over the weekend of the national championship, this film has an all-star cast with Stephen James playing the star quarterback, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with his coach, J.K. Simmons. Nice. They're both supported by an amazing supporting cast featuring Alexander Ludwig, Lil oh, Ray yeah. Howery, Tim Blake Nelson, Andrew Batchelor, a.k.a. King Batch, and Uzo wow. Aduba. Oh this one for me is a must-see. It looks so good. Wow. Uh, from one J.K. Simmons movie to another, this highly anticipated story uh, about Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz, Aaron Sorkin is back, following the trial of Chicago 7 with Being the Ricardos, starring Nicole Kidman and Javier Bardem. Uh, I'm going to be fascinated to see how they capture these very real people in a real and public situation. That seems like a great actor pairing. Yes. I think the two of them are really great together. I will be interested to see how they capture how that specific actor pairing captures another very specific actor mm -hmm. pairing. Yeah. Yeah. That's coming to Prime, right? Uh, I think it's coming to theaters oh. and then to Prime because Great. they want to do the... It's Sorkin, so yeah. you got to get into theaters first yeah. in order to get the Sorkin's Oscar Sorkin's a big run. name. It's big enough to be in theaters. Yeah. <sighs> the story we know and love, taken on by Steven Spielberg in what seems like a true retelling of the original story. If Ivo Van Hove's production pushed all the way in one direction with how modern West Side Story could be, this film seems to be the exact opposite. Uh, written by Tony Kushner, based on the musical book by Arthur Laurent, uh, who... Lawrence. Lawrence. Fuck, I literally wrote it in the thing. <laughs> I know, not, not early enough, though. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, Arthur Laurent? Lawrence. Lawrence. It's like Lawrence. But with, with a T. T. But with a T. Lawrence. Thank not you. Lawrence. Not Lawrence. Lawrence, Arthur Lawrence. Uh, both Tony Kushner and Arthur Lawrence happen to be gay writers. Uh, this one looks absolutely beautiful, poignant, both with the release of the Sondheim-inspired Tick, Tick, Boom this past month and the death of the legend himself last week. Yeah. Uh, shout out to friend of the show, Ben Cook, who plays Mouthpiece. Uh, we might have to see this the day it comes out. Because... I have a funny story about Ben Cook. Go ahead. When we were in middle school, after school, he was in, um, he was in a show. Uh, Billy Elliot, I think yep. he was in Billy Elliot, like literally down the block from PPAS. And Will and I would do this thing where we would hang out after school and just like see what we could do in Times Square, you know? Like what you could get up yeah. to. Yeah, you know, yeah. like what we could you do. You were a like, kid living in Times Square. We've got Square. this, yeah. So like this show's here, this show's there. And we were just walking past the theater and I was like, I wonder if Ben's in there right now. And we knocked on the door, uh, the stage door. Security opened it. Because you were bold at that age. Oh, we're still bold. But, I mean, we, yeah, we were more bold uh, in our middle school years. Um, and we knocked on the stage door. Security opened it, and we said, hi. We, like, peeked in. We were like, we're just seeing if Ben Cook's around. And uh, he said, uh, no, let me check. And then he closed the door, and me and Will stood out there for, like, a little bit. And we looked at each other, and we were like, let's just go. Like, this guy's not coming back. And we started walking away, and then... We hear, Will, Jacob! And we turn around, and it's Ben peeking out of the <laughs> stage door in costume, and he goes... <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was like a... Just like a nice moment. Yeah. But, yeah. I think it's really cool to see the PPAS trajectory of, like, Everyone's people doing that. so yeah. well! Yeah. yeah. It is well, good to not see everyone, them. but a lot of people There's a lot of people well. that we knew from back in the day that are doing really well. Uh, about West Side Story, <laughs> I've heard really good things, uh, early reviews... Um, saying that um, there's going to be some surprising recontextualizations of some songs in this okay. movie. Okay, I bet. So I'm really interested to see how... I bet America. America, and I think somewhere, because the person who sings it on the track list is one person. Instead of two. Oh! It's Rita Moreno. Sing somewhere. Interesting. So I'm very interested to see... She's the shop owner in this one. Yes. She's not, yeah. I'm very interested to see how that plays yeah how yeah how different this West Side Story is while still being true to its to its Man, legend Rita Moreno yeah. legend Rita Moreno the so original excited. Anita herself 
Moving on? Moving on. All right. So we all know I'm a sucker for a romance movie. It's yeah, something you yeah, both make fun of me pretty much for every week. Uh-huh. Uh, so I tried. I really did to not get into this movie. And yet. Uh, but the trailer's really, really cute. Here we are. The Hating Game stars Lucy Hale and Austin Stowell as corporate rivals who must compete for the same job. Problem is, they realize they're falling in love with each other on cute. the way. Directed by Peter Hutchings and written by female screenwriter Christina Mengert, based on the novel of the same name by Sally Thorne. You know the story. You know how it's going to go. But who cares? It looks adorable. It makes my little hopeless romantic heart sing. I have to see it. Um, yeah. That's just the hating game. Next up. All right. This next one's been on a lot of people's radars for a while. Ever since the first photos were released when Netflix announced their big movie a week push for 2021. And we all saw Leonardo DiCaprio looking quite different. Mm. Um, Don't Look Up is from director of The Big Short and Vice, Adam McKay, tells the story of two astronomers, Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence, who discover a comet that's going to destroy the Earth. I know we're all getting sick of everyone's going to die movies because I'm getting sick of them. uh, But I mean, come on. Rob Morgan, Jonah Hill, Tyler Perry, Tim Chalamet, and Meryl Streep. This wow. is going to be an incredible film. I cannot wait to see it. I think Ariana Grande and Kid yeah. Cudi both make cameos. Yes. In wow. It. That's so, incredible. Yeah. Also, we love Adam McKay. Oh my gosh. Succession. I mean, come on. Big short beep. He's... Uh, he's uh, uh, so. And even back in the day, he Anchorman, he was the originator of a lot of that Fantastic. stuff. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Big fan. I hadn't heard anything about this next film before doing this segment this week, because that normally happens to me when doing this segment, but once again, I'm really glad that I do it, because it brings me fascinating stories like this one. Lady of Heaven, directed by Eli King and written by Shayi Yassal Habib. This film's been under a lot of scrutiny by members of the Iranian government and major figures in the Muslim world for both its actual portrayal of the Muslim prophet Muhammad Ooh. and what it says about his closest confidants and families. Oh a story told in two parts, one in the modern world following the attack of Syria by ISIS and one in the world of the prophet. I'll be very interested to see what people most affected by this film have to say and what... Uh, and what they come up with and say as their opinion on it before I actually form an opinion on it. I want the people that are yeah. surrounding this community to actually that get is to a, say. That is, that, that's something that like even even American companies are like scared to touch. Right. So, so I think I think just seeing what the actual response is from the Muslim community is going to be very interesting before I make any specific judgment call on this. I'll got a whole episode about it. Hmm. Up next, we have Red Dead Redemption, the movie. (laughs) The Last Son, directed by Tim Sutton and written by Greg Johnson, is the story of man versus man, son versus father, outlaw versus outlaw. Stop making the... Oh, no, that came out last week. (laughs) (laughs) Sam Worthington and Colson Baker, a.k.a. Machine Gun Kelly, star in what looks like (laughs) one hell of a Western. Honestly, it actually looks really cool. It looks like it's going to be a cool outlaw gang versus outlaw gang movie. It's like... Like the son is destined to kill the father, but the father wants to kill him before he can get to him. It, it looks it looks cool. Okay. It, as I was watching, I was like, "This is Arthur and Dutch, or John Dutch, and Dutch." All right, I'm gonna be real. This next one, I, I personally am probably not gonna see, but I have to talk about it because Sean Baker is the filmmaker of a generation. Written alongside longtime writing partner Chris Borgosh, the third in this trilogy of real sex worker stories that Baker has told, uh, starting with Tangerine and The Florida Project. Tangerine. Red Rocket tells the story of Mikey Saber, played by Simon Rex, who returns home after a career as an adult film actor to find that home doesn't feel like home anymore. These movies, Tangerine, Florida Project, real struggle movies, um... I describe them as person's life falls apart and we watch. They're normally incredibly powerful, but they're so hard for me to watch, so I really hesitate to sit down and watch them. I had to shout it out because he's such a good director and he really deserves the recognition he's getting. Tangerine was shot on an iPhone. And it was so beautiful. Yeah, and it's gorgeous. Florida Project stepped things way up and Red Rocket looks like it's a cast of complete unknowns doing just really incredible, really beautiful work, so... I'm really interested in this one. Moving right along. Horror movie time. Yay. I'm always keeping my eyes peeled for what's new in the world of horror, as it is my mother's favorite genre. Over the years, I've gotten super into it. So we have Agnes from director Ricky Mickey Reese, who teamed up with John Selvage to co-write. This demonic possession at a nunnery story looks set to be incredibly intense, and I'm very here for it. Get thee away from the nunnery. Get thee away from the nunnery. Uh, 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 uh. 
It looks really, it looks really good. I like, I like a good de demonic possession movie. A little conjuring, a little, a little insidious, Whoa. you know. Shifting from horror to thriller next. American Refugee, directed by black filmmaker Ali Leroy, known for executive producing Everybody Hates Chris and Are We There Yet? Oh, cool. uh, and written by husband and wife duo Allison and Nicholas Buckmelter, the film follows a black family seeking safety in their doomsday prepping white neighbor's bunker as the world outside falls nice. apart. Ooh. You can already sense where things yeah. are going, so I don't really need to say anything more. Uh, it's being produced by Blumhouse, so you oh. already know it's going to be oh, yeah. great. Yeah, I mean, if... Just from the sound of it, I haven't seen this trailer, but it sounds like a, like a hiding the Jews in the basement type. Yeah. Yeah. The world is burning and you don't want to go outside. Yeah. Interesting. But also, there's a race aspect to it. Yeah. Black filmmaker telling a story about a black family relating to a white family. That's always something that I'm fascinated And in that, like, horror lens. Horror yeah. creep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Oh, yeah. Shifting back to documentary for a moment. Uh, we have To What Remains, which is the story of the search for the 80,000-plus soldiers who are still MIA from their service in World War II and the wow. struggle that's gone in and continues to go into finding them. Directed by Christopher Woods, this is an important documentary about something that really needs to get some more eyes on it. These families deserve closure, and that's exactly what Dr. Pat Scannon and his team at Project Recover are seeking to give them. Yeah. Go see this movie. Go check out Project Recover. It's yeah. really important work that they do. They dive into the ocean looking for these planes that just went down that just they were flying for combat or flying during a mission and the engine got shot or something where you Into can't go ocean, anywhere yeah. you're in, in the, the ocean, middle of the ocean yeah. yeah so they're trying to find 80,000 soldiers who haven't been brought home after wow. all this time um so very important work that they do and finally, for this week, we have Off the Rails, directed by female filmmaker Jules Williamson and written by openly gay writer Jordan Waller. Off the Rails tells the story of three friends who set out to recreate a train trip from their youth with the daughter of their friend who passed away. It reminds me of a much, much lighter to five bloods in terms of basic setup, but I think it's going to be a much different movie. Just like while watching the trailer, I was like, oh, it's to five bloods, but about white women doing a journey for the daughter instead of the son okay um cool. yeah i think it looks cute i think it was a movie that i wanted to highlight because lgbtq writers yay female directors yay uh yeah go check it out if you want to see that that's all the movies coming out this week actually there are a couple more but they're in the description down below not on facebook twitter or google plus so we say this every there. week Stop checking Google+. Plus. Go see movies. And once again, if you go see them and you like them and we recommended them, tag us. Let us know. We would love to know that we're supporting local cinema and getting you out to go see your local AMC or your local Cineplex or whatever is in your town. Uh, enjoy movies. Enjoy TV. Enjoy everything. Yay. Just like we're enjoying right now. Jacob, what content are you consuming? Bada boom! Well... I have really been enjoying Hawkeye so far. Me too. Fabulous. Yeah, I saw episodes one and two. Haven't seen three yet. I'll catch up. We watched three. I know. <laughs> I'm still enjoying Succession. Love it. Love it. We uh, got a shout out. Matthew McFadden. McFadden? McFadden? Fadden? Matthew McFadden? McFadden? Fadden? 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 Anyway, Matthew McFadden, Fadden. Tom Wamsgans. I love you, man. Yes! Yeah. Um, what an episode uh, and I, I mean there's a new episode watching, that will be out by yeah, the time this podcast is out watching that episode though made me want to work with him yeah like solidified it if I had any doubt which I didn't I already knew it in but my, that that episode yeah didn't. it brought it from here to here yeah um I'm still playing cyberpunk still watching American Dad on my off time uh I don't think there's anything else get back i'm watching that on disney plus nice. i watched one out of the three um installments right. and my gosh this documentary is raw mm. check it out if you're a beatles fan and even if you're not educate yourself yeah if you're just like a fan of great writing great songwriting watching the four of them it's insane try and put an album together yep is just i'm sure a especially class. at the worst point like their right. lowest point mm -hmm. of their career they're not on all to collaborate they're they not like... on the same page that it is just it's tough to watch hmm. i think i don't was it you who said that it's like watching like four couples break up simultaneously 
No. Someone described it as that. I would My guess sister, I think. Your sister or Sent Will? me a text. Yeah, that was like, it's like watching multiple Four divorces. Just break up? Yeah. Oh, like... gosh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you gotta check it out, yeah. but it sounds brutal. Yeah. I keep hovering over it on Disney Plus, and I'm like, I don't know if I can handle that right now. <laughs> well, yeah, it's it's a lot of footage, so you can have it in the background, and you'll still, you'll still find yourself being like, what's the team? What are they yeah. doing? Exactly. Yeah, cool. Okay. Uh, well, I have also really been enjoying Hawkeye. Mm-hmm. It's really, really great. You should check it out, too. Um, I started watching, and I showed these two hooligans, uh, the first two episodes of Netflix's new anime, Super Crooks. Yeah. Uh, which is very kind of like The Boys meets Invincible, uh, but yeah. all from like the perspective of like the villains in the story, you know? Which is kind of um, like The Boys and Invincible. I don't know about It's the same, not really it's the same comic writer. Yeah, yeah, it is the same comic writer, so that's probably why it feels like that. Yeah. Um, really great show. Super funky. Check it out. Um, I have also gotten back into Luigi's Mansion 3 wow. on my Nintendo Switch. Nice. Cool. Flash in the past. Don't know why. Just got it's into fun. it. Needed something a little bit lighthearted, you know, to play. Yeah, sure. Just sucky sucky. Yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> the whole game, right? Uh, Just suck into your vacuum. And <laughs> that's what I've been watching. Logan. I've been loving Hawkeye. It's great. Episode 3 especially. <laughs> Uh, there was a moment that I almost cried. Um, for a Marvel show to do that to me is is tough. So very impressed with Hawkeye. Haley Steinfeld is just so good. So, so good. good. Utterly impressed. Everything by her. she does. Go watch Dickinson. Uh, I'm watching Love Life season two. Haven't gotten to Arian Moyad yet, but I'm very excited to. I'm watching Succession season three. Playing Cyberpunk 2077. I just started. I'm doing my Corpo playthrough. Playing Control. Playing Alan Wake. And tomorrow, I'm going to see All Elite Wrestling's Dynamite live. Oh, it's wow. tomorrow. Yeah, it's tomorrow. Oh gosh. Tomorrow in, in reality. In oh, right, right. Real yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. In real time. Tomorrow. Literally tomorrow. Oh, okay. No, yeah, that's what I thought. No, not Wait. tomorrow, today. Tomorrow, tomorrow Wednesday. Tomorrow, Wednesday. Okay. Man, yeah, I hate sense. it when we do this. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, man. That's what I'm consuming. I'm, I'm listening to some themes from AEW in anticipation, so that's fun. Um, but yeah, other than that, I'm just, I'm doing the same things that I've been doing. I'm busy editing and working on Black Wolf stuff. I'm writing my own stuff, so I haven't had as much time to consume as I would like, very but, cool, very you cool. know. And we'll all be watching that Saudi Arabia Grand Prix. Oh yeah, we Come will. Come on, Lewis! Come on, Lewis! You can win this 2021 championship, baby! Go Team Alpine! My money's on Alpine over AlphaTauri. I just oh, like Alphatory. him. I oh, like them. They're close. They're close. Yeah. I like Alpine. I like Alpine Esteban's too. great. Okay, and this... Uh, uh, and... I love this headphone chat. Uh, what? I don't... I, I didn't want to cut... I cut you off. I didn't want to cut you off. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. That's all right. Are you trying to add the podcast? Yeah. yeah. Let's okay. not talk about F1. We could go all day. We could day. go on for so long. We could go all right. day. Thank you so much for watching the podcast. Uh, make sure you like it. Make sure you comment on it. Follow us for more... Podcast interviews, musical yeah. covers. Get at us on Instagram, huh? And Facebook. collectively yeah. and individually. Yeah. yeah. Say hi. Yeah. Say hi. Please. No comment shoutouts. No. Nah. Not this week. No. Nope. Leave a comment so you can get shouted out the on the next one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm Jeremy Van Suarez. I'm Jacob Wade. I'm Logan Riley Bruner. And skedaddle. Bye. Bye. That's it. <laughs>